Hey everyone, it's Sensei Victoria Whitfield here, your journey partner in business, welcoming you back to episode 154 of the Journeypreneur podcast. This is your source for channel holistic stress management techniques, guidance, inspiration, and motivation to stay on your path to rapid financial ascension and massive impact as a conscious entrepreneur. So the title of this podcast episode is The Dark Side of coaching. And right now, as I hit record on this podcast to you, it is 1111 on the clock. So this is a very auspicious time for us to talk about this subject. And as I was meditating before um, recording, my spirit guides kept saying over and over and over again, the word addiction addiction, entrepreneur, addiction, 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 over and over. And uh, let's talk about this because, uh, gosh, I was just on the phone with one of my private clients and we were discussing uh, about the different needs that we have as creatives um, who have a background in like they say uh, service industry, the holistic industry, the entertainment um, industries as opposed to someone who is has a background in corporate right um and those kinds of industries as far as their main stay before coming to entrepreneurialism and i know for me as someone who is highly creative visionary artistic um right i i'm a musician and all those types of things uh, there is something about my addictive personality that fuels my creative genius. I have to understand that. I have to accept and come to terms. I'm. This is a lifelong journey of understanding that my addictive personality is what fuels my creative genius. So that's another reason why for me personally, you know, my time in corporate was only a couple years. I couldn't stay for like a long period of time because it was too structured. It kind of drove me nuts. (laughs) Yes, I got out of there, right? I uh, was working uh, at a medical billing and coding practice, grew it from $75,000 a month to over $750,000 a month in uh, just under two years. And I was like, you know what? That's enough corporate. Gotta go. Um... (laughs) And uh, well, I did right by them. I grew their, grew them to 10x and then bounced. But the, the, as a creative, I have this addictive personality. You know, and I'll, let's just put this all on me. You know how we roll <laughs> when it's just you and I on um, these podcast episodes. But I can't just do something halfway, right? I got to... Uh, or. I don't know if you're listening um, with kids in the car, but I can't just do it half-ass. i got to do it whole-ass. Like, if I'm going to be lazy, I'm going to be a complete waste of time. I'm going to dissolve into the ground lazy. I am going to, um, like, fall asleep on the toilet type lazy. But I'm not going to do things half. I'm going to go whole, right? Um, I have an addictive personality. When I start the the bag of popcorn right uh, that uh, oh, curse you trader joe's that olive oil popcorn right uh, that's the thing of the past for me thank the goddess but like when i start one of those big bags it's like, oh, you know i gotta i gotta finish it i'm a finisher i tend to to finish what i start i have high follow-through but i at the same time as a creative i have a bunch of ideas rolling around in my head and uh, we've talked about this in previous podcast episodes that I do I have a uh, an addictive personality I have a history of addiction right um by the grace of personal powerful decisions as well as the grace of um spirit I've released alcohol um released drugs right um and also released now I'm in the process of releasing um stress eating right and addictive uh addictions to food but that doesn't mean that my addictive personality stops there. It jumps over to workaholism, right? Uh, like adding more, adding more to my plate, right? Or um, taskaholism, <laughs> right? And I, I'm saying this, and we've we've discussed this many times in the podcast. But I I want us to talk especially and shine light on 
that, hmm, well, I guess I'm not the only creative entrepreneur out there because in the coaching industry that I've seen now after 11 years straight of being in high-end group coaching programs, so I know a thing or two and been gone from program to program, I've seen that the way that these programs are structured, it's by someone or or a group of someone who have an addictive personality and it attracts people who have addictive personalities. So on one hand, I'm like, wow, these are my people. Wow, this is my program. On the other, it's like, oh, no. Oh, dear. Right. Okay. So I want to learn how to grow my business. Right. Or the coach comes and says, I want to show you how to grow your business. And so rather than focusing on the one thing the one thing or they'll even say they'll even say my current business coach right now he always says you're the one thing focus on the one thing but the actual programming um will throw everything under the sun everything under the sun at you and everything says start here right every page every workbook every event every meeting says all right start here here this is where you start and so you know in uh my colby is 4664 so i'm not as high as a quick start as it, as most um entrepreneurs most entrepreneurs are seven and above right so i'm, I'm kind of mid compared to most um entrepreneurs and what what does that mean if i'm speaking gibberish that means um i tend to follow through on the ideas that I have. That's just how I'm wired. Colby is a, like a, an assessment for how you are wired. Um, whereas most entrepreneurs, if you say start here, they will start here. And then if you say start here again, they will start again over here and again over here, over here, over here, over here. And it's so exciting because the new now next um, is an incredible seduction. And you get that dopamine hit, that serotonin hit um when you when you start something new or learn something new we can get into a space of being stymied by perpetual learning and perpetual newness right and perpetual reinventing the wheel or discovering new things whereas you know I was speaking to my client on the phone just earlier today and we're like that is not good for me, right? We were comparing that or comparing notes as creative entrepreneurs. Having a constant onslaught of let me give you 50, all of my courses. I'm going to bundle it all into one and throw it at you. Okay. If you put someone like me with an addictive personality, I'm going, that's going to overwhelm me. I'm going to try and tackle the whole thing and then I'm going to feel like crap about myself uh, because, oh, well, you know, I can't, um, I can't achieve all of this, and so I'll either try and feel like crap about myself, or I'll look at, I'll buy it, get overwhelmed, and then not do anything. Right? Um, I, I, whenever I'm <laughs> recording these podcasts, like I always cast a sidelong glance to my personal growth and business development um, transformational coaching graveyard shelf. <laughs> like I look at it, and I'm like, oh, look at all them binders. Oh, look at all them journals. Those are worth millions. Those are million dollars, millions and millions of ideas worth millions and millions. And uh, right, all of the, all of that potential is throwing a fire hose of potential um, at me. Being in group coaching programs or being in coaching programs. So, what I appreciate though is that the right kind of coach will make things as simple as possible. But there's a dark side to the coaching industry. And one of the big dark sides um, to the coaching industry is this um, concept of over-delivering. There's, um, there's an art to over-delivering that doesn't involve overwhelming, right? And just dumping all of what you would think is valuable upon your your clients um, and your customers. Be kind to yourself. Um, if you are a leader of a group coaching program and you're like, oh, you know, we, we, we charge 
this amount, so we gotta, like, load it up, we gotta load it up with as much value as possible. Is that so? Or why don't you just make the few things that you do deliver so juicy that you don't have to dump a whole bunch of extra stuff that's gonna overwhelm um, your customers and clients? Because I'm saying this as someone who's gone through that. I'm the end user. <laughs> this is my review saying, attention group coaching program leaders, stop, stop, stop with the kick. Keep adding more and more and more. No, no, no. I'd rather you be an amazing specialist at this one thing so that when I come to you, it's like uh, you take me completely to the next level and nothing feels wasted. Nothing feels wasted rather than adding in all of this and all of this and all of this and all of this more and more to try and um, beef up your value, uh, your perceived value. No, you are highly valuable at what you do better than anybody else. And I would love to see more of that honing down. Like in my business, I'm trying to do less better. Right, I want to be known for my one thing, and that's the visionary shaman circle. Everything else over the last 10 years of my business have been whittling down, whittling down, whittling down all of my offerings so that my one thing is the visionary shaman circle um, and shamanic vision journey for med uh, uh, shamanic vision journey meditation for entrepreneurs. That is my one thing. I want to become the specialist at that so that when someone enters into my program, they don't have this bloated feeling of like, oh crap, like you know, I never really got to you know crack into all of that and what I paid for I didn't get and a little bit like all of this clutter, mental clutter that can happen um, in the especially group coaching industry. So that. Um, so that fire hose of quote unquote value um, is driven by the addictive personality of like, I'm never enough. This program is never enough. You can never get enough, right? And so we're just going to keep escalating, escalating, escalating. And for me as a person who has a history of addiction, that is not good for me. But also there's another dark side. Um, to the coaching industry and that is around privacy I w ooh, I get the chills uh, as I unveil that to you as you're listening in <sighs> I never want this to happen to anyone who's ever worked with me like here's what's happened to me before in the past like I've been in a group coaching program we're in a um, my coach created the most incredible transformational space right there's you know a couple hundred entrepreneurs in the room and we're going deep into limiting beliefs and all of what's holding us back from our next breakthrough and we're processing together as an a powerful high level group coaching intimate group of conscious individuals so I come to the mic and share something very deep um, and personal uh, about my own personal life and how that affects my mindset, right? And my productivity, my, my ability to feel safe in the world, even as a woman, um, let alone a female business owner, um, in this industry, uh, in, in this time, et cetera, right? So, and, you know, people are crying and whatever other people are having their breakthroughs and stuff like that next week, then in my, uh, coaches, uh, newsletter going out to this big old list of people it says look at the transformations we're having and it's a clip of me speaking about my private life that was meant for that sacred space that sacred room so in my program in the visionary shaman circle we all sign a mutual non-disclosure agreement which means legally what happens in the circle stays in the circle Right. Yes, it, p it poses a marketing challenge on me of like, how do I convey how awesome my main product is without being able um, to just tell you what's going on in there by like by law. Right. Uh, I signed that mutual NDA as well. Um, but the reason why I did that is uh, something it emerged out of my own personal coaching wound because I felt 
my privacy was betrayed, right? My trust was betrayed. I was like, all right, well, I guess that cat's out of the bag, right? All right, uh, just, you know, uh, uh, freaked out about it and then it's gone, you know? You can't, you can't unsend an email <laughs> to a list. You just can't, right? Uh, and so, okay. But for me, to the way that I made amends or healed that is going forward, anyone that works with me, they never have to worry about that. I will have permission from them to share their stories or to go more into their, their details, right? If you see stories on my websites or, or whatever in my uh, sales and marketing materials, that is because I have the consent of the person in ahead of time to, to share that about them. Right. And all of our live meetings are the recordings are only available to people who are members. Right. Who have paid and who have also signed that NDA. Right. So this is not like any of those recordings are not marketing um, material. That is just for notes taking and supporting the community that is heavily invested. Right. And connected to our our intimate group, you know. Coaching can have the ability to probe very deeply, and I want to shine a light on this, this issue of privacy in the, in the coaching industry. It keeps getting breached over and over and over again, right, from people's live events to just sharing stuff left and right. And I, I want to invoke this. I can't say that I have all of the answers, but I do have some feelings, right? I have some feelings, and I wanted to share... Um, this with you in this podcast to open your eyes around that and open up the conversation of like, have you ever had that experience where you were in a group coaching program and your, you came up with your next million dollar idea, your next big idea. And for whatever reason, um, you were not protected. Somehow you weren't protected. Maybe um, it was shared in the, the coach's marketing or maybe uh, without your consent or your consent was given in a gigantic fine print thingy that no one in their life would able be able to read in the amount of time that you were given to consider it, right? Have you ever had that experience? Um, or have you ever had the experience of like you're... you're uh, thing your business was used as an example and this has happened to me <laughs> um, to other entrepreneurs in the group and someone came right around and just ripped right off what you're doing do you know how expensive it is to get a registered trademark I now do <laughs> that costs thousands and thousands of dollars to have it done right and I'm not talking about legal zoom where you like kind of slap it in and, and that type of thing. No, like where you have a lawyer officially come through and make sure all of your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. That costs thousands of dollars, <laughs> which now I am honored to have been able to pay out so that I can receive the level of support that I deserve at this level of development. But at the same time, it over the last decade, I've had countless people come and just rip right off and they'll they'll be inspired right? They'll be inspired by the divine work that I'm doing, but so inspired that it ends up being ripped off, right? So be kind to yourself. If that's been the situation for you, I want you to know if that, if you've had that experience where you've had amazing transformation in group coaching programs, like me, right there with you, absolutely. Yet, unfortunately, it's this, um, no boundaries, no limitations, nonstop, more, more, more in the industry. If you've had that uh, overload and overwhelm experience, I'm right there with you. Um, and if you've also had a breach of trust or privacy um, for whatever reason, you know, for me, I'm I, again, I'm not a coach. I'm not a coach. And I'm not a coach. I receive coaching all the time, but I'm not a coach. And what I am, though, is I'm a healer and healing arts are very closely related to medical arts and in these two industries privacy you want to talk about HIPAA right and in the medical right uh, as I shared at the beginning I used to be in the medical field right so privacy comes first confidentiality agreements right Um, if you're in the therapy and mental health uh, fields 
We learn about that, right? Your privacy is essential. If you're going to work with your energy healer and you don't feel safe, how can your body receive that healing energy and make the adjustment, right? So I just wanted to shine a light on the dark side of the coaching industry and open it to you. Like, is is this something that you've ever seen? Um, I even like to think of it as coachaholism, where people can't stop coaching. I've actually, because I attract coaches into my visionary shaman circle, um, like because we do really powerful support uh, for creative innovation um, and intuitive development for leaders. So it, the, I attract a lot of coaches, but sometimes I have to check even my own clients and be like, look, this is a no coaching zone. I know that other person's having like something going on, but you don't have to tell them or ask them the coaching question. Uh, <laughs> it's coachaholism. So be kind to yourself if that's another thing that you've seen. Now, I want to open it up to you, my dear listener, um, whoever you are, wherever you are, right? Tell me. What have you seen as the dark side of the coaching industry? What would what would you say is? And I would love to hear it. If you could send me an email at victoria at victoriawhitfield.com. This is episode 154 of the Journeypreneur podcast. I'd love to hear from you and maybe even bring you on the podcast so that we can talk about this, right? I want to have more of a roundtable discussion. Um, and even if you're a coach or a group coach, et cetera, or not, or someone who's just uh, been through programs like me, I want to hear what you have to say, because um, this journey is so much better when we go it together. All right. So I'm going to start bringing this podcast episode to a close also because I got to hop on Zoom now and lead my uh, one of my weekly zoom meditation classes by the way if you want to come meditate with me what are you waiting for come on over to victoriawhitfield.com forward slash meditate um and if you put in the code right there's a guest code that you can put in as a journeypreneur if you put that code journey p If you put Journey P as the guest code, you will be able to come to your next meditation with me on Zoom for free, right? So go to victoriawhitfield.com forward slash meditate. You pick the day and time that works for you, right? And it'll say, do you have a coupon code or do you have a guest code? And in that um, space, as a Journeypreneur podcast listener, this is my gift to you, put in the code Journey P, Journey P. No space, just the letter P. Don't put (laughs) P-E-E. Journey, the letter P, no space, just all all one word in there, and that'll get you in free for your next uh, live Zoom meditation uh, with yours truly. And looking forward to seeing you. Oh, my goodness. So if this is your first time on the Journeypreneur podcast, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Make sure you hit subscribe on iTunes so that you get the notifications first every single time one of these podcast episodes is syndicated. Um, If you're an Android user, come on over to journeypreneur.podbean.com so that you can continue to subscribe um, and follow as all of these podcasts are updated there. And this is episode 154. Please, in the comments on iTunes, leave me a five-star review. That's the only place that you can comment. Let me know what was the one thing that I said that really sparked you on your path, maybe opened your eyes to some things that um, you've seen on your journey but just didn't really have many words for. I want to hear it. And thank you for all of those of you who have left your five-star reviews That helps me to keep going as well as to reach more conscious entrepreneurs, creative leaders like you, um, so that they can stay on their path to rapid financial ascension and massive impact as conscious entrepreneurs. So with that, we'll close this episode the same way we do every single time. Please enjoy the journey. Do not lose your glow as you grow in life and business. And we'll see you in the next podcast episode. Bye for now.